Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Today I'm doing a quick install, just uh, replacing the windshield on my Memphis Shades Road Warrior fairing. The windshield that I currently have installed on here is the 13 inch model. I wanted something that was a little bit shorter to maybe give me a little more airflow in the helmet. The other nice thing about a shorter windshield is that it's not gonna block my view as much through the GoPro when I'm doing my motovlog stuff. So hopefully you guys will see the difference. The windshield is only held on by these six thumb screws, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove those right now. So this is a good time to clean this area underneath the windshield. It actually gets pretty dirty. So this does ship with another set of screws, thumb screws to mount this thing, but I'm just gonna reuse the ones that I have already. It's nice that they sent them though. This is the seven inch dark smoke color. And uh, that's in comparison to the light smoke of the 13 inch right there. Yep, I think that's gonna work out nicely. So it's not much taller than the stock fairing without a windshield on it. So this should be really similar to my experience driving just with the fairing on there without the windshield. Just gonna put the rest of the thumb screws in and take this out for a ride. Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks since I posted a video and uh, you know, I tried to get one out at least once a week, but if the content doesn't work out, I'm not gonna put out something that I'm not proud of. And um, I had a video I was working on for last week. Uh, I picked up a, a Senna 10C Evo uh, communicator slash camera. And uh, I was testing it out on this new helmet, which is a Rorock Atlas 2.0. I'm gonna talk about that in a few minutes here. But uh, basically, I didn't have a uh, GoPro mount for this camera yet, so you know I wanted to get the um, Senna 10C so I could hook it on the side here and you know see how the camera footage looked while I was waiting to put my GoPro mount on. Long story short, I, I wasn't really impressed with, with the video and I was hoping that the audio quality would be great uh, to use for motovlogging, but the noise cancellation on there, it just sounded really weird to me. Um, like I, I wasn't getting any of the bike sounds and I tried uh, multiple settings on there and I just didn't find what I was looking for. So I ended up sending it back. But I did order a, uh, a chin mount. And I'll, I'll put a link in the description for that. I think the place is called chinmounts.com if I'm not mistaken. So Rorock does not have a chin mount out yet, although I did hear that they've been working on one, so I don't know if or when that one's gonna show up, but uh, doing some research online, I found this uh, this company that makes these things. Um, they're actually 3D printed, but I ordered one, I think it was around 30 bucks or something like that, but it's a uh, pretty good quality. Like it se seems like it'll be pretty sturdy. Now, I wasn't comfortable just sticking this on with the, uh, the little 3M tape that comes with this chin mount, so uh, I went ahead and put some Sugru on there, which is like this moldable glue stuff, and uh, you give it a day to dry, and, and it, it's pretty solid. I really didn't want to do that on a, on a brand new helmet like this one, but I just didn't want to lose a camera either. Now back to the helmet. Again, this is a Rorock Atlas 2.0. I never had a version 1.0, so I really can't compare this to the previous model, but uh, just wanted to give my thoughts and impressions on this one after using it for a few weeks. I guess I'll start out by saying why I wanted to get a helmet in the first place. So my regular helmet is a Shoei RFSR, and uh, I wasn't having any real issues with that helmet, but I did notice a few things that I thought might be better for uh, motovlogging and for riding in the summer out here. So although my Shoei helmet is really super comfortable as far as the padding, um, it's really not 
good for riding in the summer out in, in Arizona. Um, I was sweating like crazy in that thing, and um, it, you know, it's it's just because it's such a tight fit. There's decent um, ventilation in there, but I wouldn't really say that was a summer helmet. I've been using that one for about a year now, and I can honestly say that uh, I, I don't want to wear that in the summer anymore. So that first reason uh, I decided to change out the helmet was just because I, I wanted something a little bit lighter weight with better airflow. And um, this one is actually a carbon fiber helmet. And it's the first one I've ever tried, but I, I like it a lot. You can really tell the difference in the weight. So the other reason I got this helmet was just for the looks. I thought this helmet looked super awesome and I was willing, because of the looks, um, I was willing to take that chance of, of ordering one from a UK based company where I couldn't even try this on locally to see if it would actually fit me. So luckily their sizing charts uh, were pretty accurate and I got the right fit on the first try. So this helmet also has a large visor, so it's really wide, so you, you've got a, a wide field of view and you can actually see better on your peripheral. So like if you're turning to do a head check or something, it's real easy now to see traffic in the lanes next to you. So that part is really cool. And the last feature I was looking forward to was the Fidlock neck strap. Now this locking system is magnetic, so if you get on your bike and uh, get your gloves on and then realize you didn't strap your helmet on uh, you could definitely do this with gloves on so just pull the little tab and the magnet comes off and uh, then to latch it you just put the magnet together and there you go it is secure so I could probably tighten this a little bit more but um, just for sake of demonstration the magnet is latched so for the pros, I would say um, the looks are definitely one of the pros. The neck strap, the Fidlock neck strap that I just talked about, the wider field of view, and uh, the weight and basic like overall comfort of this helmet. Now let's talk about a couple of the cons that I've noticed. And the biggest con for anybody considering uh, picking up one of these is that it, it is a UK based company and there, as far as I know, there are no US retailers where you can actually see one of these or try one on in person. So if you're willing to take the risk, I personally think it's worth it. It depends on your circumstance. These aren't cheap helmets, so I believe this one was $575. Now, I'm not affiliated with Rorock in any way. I'm just a customer that bought this and I've just been using this as my daily helmet for a few weeks now. So I'm hoping that my honest opinion will uh, give you a little bit of insight if you're thinking about picking up one of these for yourself. So uh, one of the other cons that, that I can list for this helmet is um, the cheek pad and uh, liner quality. So it's not that it's uncomfortable, it just doesn't seem like as high a quality as previous helmets that I've had and, and I've got to go back to my other current helmet right now is which is the showy RFSR so my comments about the uh, the quality of the cheek pads in the headliner isn't so much the material but the fasteners that they use to uh, keep them in place and again, this is, uh, this is an observation. I, I'm going to have to look at this again after using it for, you know, like a year or so and um, give a long-term review. But uh, basically, my showy helmet uses these little button snaps, which seem like really nice quality, and I think they might even be replaceable. I've never checked into it because mine have never worn out, so I haven't had a need. But they do look like you can pop them out and put replacements in if you need to. But the ones on the Rurok helmet, I don't know. It, it just doesn't seem as nice of a quality. I'll do some close-up shots so you can see what I'm talking about. So I have had the headliner and the cheek pads out of here a few times, uh, messing with the uh, Bluetooth module and then that Senna headset 
that um, I had purchased and I was testing out last week. And I can already notice that the cheek pads don't snap in as good as they did when I first got the helmet. So within 10 uses, I've noticed it's a little bit loose now. They still seem to be holding in place, so I'm not going to contact Rorock just yet, but I'll have to see how they go after I take them in and out a few more times. So the other con I have for this helmet is the Shockwave sound system that you can purchase separately. I installed that and tested it out for a couple days. Um, the battery doesn't last long at all, and uh, the quality of the speakers was, it was just horrible in my opinion. It was bad to the point where I would just prefer not to use the sound system than, than to use it with the, that bad of speakers. Now, I read somewhere that Rorock might be doing some replacement speakers for these things, but that has not been confirmed yet. If they do release some new speakers, I'll try it out again and let you know. So this 7-inch uh, Memphis Shades windshield seems to be doing really good. Now, I do notice I have definitely more wind to my face but I was expecting that you know it still blocks enough off my chest having the fairing here that it makes it a, a nice comfortable ride but man for the summer sometimes you need that extra wind in your face in the helmet you know hopefully the audio quality is okay on the microphone I hope that's not picking up too much of that wind noise So I guess uh, final verdict on the Rorock Atlas 2.0 is uh, thumbs up for me. I definitely recommend it. I, I think it was worth the wait. Um, this was announced back in February and I ended up having to wait a few months to get this. I actually ordered this helmet on launch day back in February and had to wait a few months to get delivery of this uh, because of the pandemic and everything. So. You know, it's not their fault. They couldn't get these shipments, you know, from out of the country. And they did their best to, to get it out to everybody when they did. But yeah, I highly recommend this helmet. And, uh, you know, we'll see what the long-term review looks like. But so far, it's looking good. Now, the Memphis Shades uh, shorter windshield seems to be doing okay for now. I won't know until I take a look at this footage um, hopefully you guys have a good view of everything that's one of the reasons I did it so I shot a video the other day and with this new helmet with the GoPro being mounted so low and I think that chin is actually lower on this helmet as well but the uh, footage was kind of like low a little bit lower than the top of the windshield so it was kind of an uh, obstructed view and I really wasn't happy with it so I ended up just deleting the footage So I will cut it here, but please like and subscribe and I will catch you guys on the next one.